So by now you've learned how to use regular trigonometry, the primary three trig ratios when we have a 90 degree triangle. And then we've learned the sine law, which works well when we have an angle and an opposite side. But if we look at this particular question here, um, we can't use the three primary trig ratios because it's not a 90 degree triangle. And we can't use the sine law because we have this angle, but we don't have the opposite side. And we have these two sides, but there's no way of finding their opposite angles because we only know one angle in the triangle. So we're going to look at something that's called the cosine law that will help us when we know two sides and the angle that's in between them. So I've got a triangle here, and I've labeled the sides A, B, and C corresponding to their angles. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the sine law. We're going to drop a perpendicular down here, sort of like that, and we'll call that H. <coughs> now, it turns out that the cosine law is related to Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to look at this triangle here. And this whole thing is B. I'm going to call this little segment from here to here X. So let's let this be X. And if this whole length is B and this part of it is X, then this little part here would be B minus X. And let's, let's develop the cosine ratio of angle C. So if I took the cosine of angle C, that would be X over A. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Pythagoras' theorem in this right triangle. Remember in Pythagoras' theorem it's h squared plus x squared equals a squared. So this side squared, short side squared plus short side squared equals hypotenuse squared. In this part of the triangle, we can also use Pythagoras' theorem. So c squared would equal h squared plus b minus x all squared. So this squared plus this squared equals this squared. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply this out. Remember, b minus x squared means b minus x times b minus x. So this is going to become b squared, b times b, b times minus x would be minus xb, and then minus x times b is a mi another minus xb, and minus x times minus x is positive x squared. So we get b squared minus 2xbs plus x squared. So this is what we would get with Pythagoras' theorem on this side. Now we're going to work with this equation, but what we're going to try to do is write all of this Pythagorean relationship in terms of A, B, and C, because H and X were just parts of the triangle that we arbitrarily um, chose to represent the height and, and part of the side of the triangle. So do we have, we want to get rid of H. Do we have a relationship with H squared? Yes, we do, right here. So up here you can see that h squared would be a squared minus x squared, if we brought that to the other side. So let's replace the h squared with a squared minus x squared. b is fine, because that's one side of our triangle. In here there's an x, and we don't want x, we want everything a, b, and c. So x, here's a relationship that's going to get rid of x x would be, if we multiplied everything by a, it would be a cosine c. And then there's the b. So this part here was the x. x was a cosine c, b plus x squared. Now we don't want to write x squared either, but if you look at the formula here, it's the x squares are going to nicely cancel out. We have a minus x squared plus an x squared. So those are going to go, and we get c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus, now we have 2a cos cb, 
why don't we write the A and the B together? And we have developed right here what we call the cosine law. So the cosine law says if you want to find a side, if you want to find a side like C, C squared, this side squared, equals the other two sides squared, A squared plus B squared, minus two times A times B, times the cosine of angle C, which would be this angle down here. So this is how we can develop the cosine law, and we will now use this cosine law to find parts of the triangle. So here's the cosine law again. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. And I've set a triangle up here where we've got to find little side C. And we know A, and, sorry, we know A, we know B, and we know angle C. So if we want to find side C, C squared would equal A squared. So A side A would be 10. It's the side opposite angle A. B would be 9, it's the side opposite angle B. And again, A is 10, B is 9, cosine of angle C, which is 50 degrees. And so it becomes a calculator question. So 10 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 10 times 9 times the cosine of the angle in between them whoops gives 65.298 so 65.3 now that's not C remember that's still C squared so if we want to get C we need to our final step will be to square root that answer and it's best to have all your decimals when you're doing your square root. So I'm going to go the square root and then the answer button. So I'll put all those decimals in. And now we can round to two decimal places. We'll say 8.08 .08 would be the length of side C. Now with the cosine law, C squared equals A squared plus B squared and so on. If you're trying to find side B, say, well, then the law will just become b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of b. And if you're trying to find a, well, then a squared will go here, and the other two variables will go here. And so this angle here these two are always related. And so really you can say that the cosine law is if you want to find a side, it's the side you're trying to find squared equals the other two sides squared added together minus two times those sides times the cosine of the angle that's, that's in between them. So if you're looking at the formula here, c squared equals a squared plus B squared minus 2 times A and B times the cosine of the angle in between those those two values that you're trying to find. We'll look at another example here. So here we've got an angle of 67. So we know the angle and we know the two sides that adjoin that angle. Or in other words, we know that this side's 8, we know that this side's 7, and we know that the angle in between those two sides is six, 67. That means that we can use the cosine law. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of the angle in between them. So we're trying to, we're going to try to figure out how far or how big how long side A is here. So we don't know that. So that's A squared equals B squared plus C squared. Again, it doesn't matter which side goes where here, B or C, as long as there's 
as long as you know the two sides, and then this angle must be the angle in between B and C, these two sides that you know. So 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 times the cosine of the angle in between them. So now it's a matter of going to the calculator and working this out. Come on, calculator. There we go. So, 8 squared, let's clear all this, 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 times cosine of 67 is 69.24. So that's what a squared is, so a will be the square root of that. And so we get 8.32. And so the length of this side would be 8.32. Let's look at another example. So, so far in, in these um, questions we've done, we've known two sides and the angle in between, and that's enabled us to find the opposite side of that. The other way we can use the cosine law is if we happen to know all three sides of the triangle and we don't know any angle. And so let's say in this question we're expected to find angle A. Well, here's our formula for the cosine law. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of a. So in this case, case this is what we want to find. We want to find angle a. Remember, angle a is, is, capital A means angles, and these little sides would be the opposite. So little a is 7, little b is 5, and little c is 8. All right, so... In order to find angle A, obviously we need sides A, B, and C, and we have those here. So it's a little bit harder using the cosine law to find the angle because we're going to have to do a lot of algebra to isolate A. So let's fill in what we know. Do we know little side A? Yes, we do. That's 7. 7 squared equals little b. That's 5. Plus side C, which is 8. Minus 2 times 5 times 8 times the cosine of angle A, which is what we're going to find. So, let's square these numbers here. 7 times 7, 49. 5 times 5, 25. 8 times 8, 64. And I'm going to do 2 times 5 times 8. So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 8 is 80. Now, it's often at this step where I see a lot of students make mistakes. They'll, they'll, they'll at this point right here say, well, this is 25 plus 64 minus 80, and they'll go 25 plus 64 minus 80. We can't do that because this 80 is 80 times cosine A. So we could add these two together, 25 plus 64, so that would be 89. But we can't say that 89 minus 80 is 9 because this is not 80, it's 80 times the cosine of A. So once, once you're at this stage right now, keeping in mind that we've got to isolate A, we're going to get rid of 89 by minusing 89 from both sides. So when we do that, that's gone. Here we have 49 minus 89, which would be negative 40, equals negative 80 cosine A. And now to isolate cosine A, this is negative 80 times. So the opposite of timesing is dividing. We'll divide by negative 80. So now we get negative 40 divided by negative 80. Whoops, not negative. Negative divided by negative is a positive. We get positive a half equals cosine A. And then the last thing to do would be to take the inverse cosine of both sides. So that would get rid of that. 
and we have a is equal to the inverse cosine of 0 0.5. So shift cosine 0 0.5 gives us an angle of, look at that, exactly 60 degrees. So now we know that angle A is 60 degrees. So the cosine law states that C squared, if you want to find this side here, this side squared will equal the other two sides squared added together minus 2 times A times B times the cosine of that angle that's in between those two sides. And similar formulas work for the other two sides if those are the ones that you're you're trying to find. The cosine law, if we know two sides and the angle that's in between them, or if we knew all three sides in the triangle and we were asked to find an angle. So that's the cosine law and how we use it to find parts of triangles.